Now, Dr. Heckman's research has been used to fuel some incredible programs for parents and children all over the country, like this now famous Obama-favored Harlem Children's Zone. I don't know if you've heard of this. The Har Harlem Children's Zone was featured on uh, This American Life yesterday on National Public Radio. It was an amazing program, so if you have time to listen to that, I suggest you do. And what they've discovered is that even the simplest investment of attention, reading to a child, talking to a child, exploring with a child, can make a tremendous difference over the course of that child's lifetime. Just having someone interested in them. Are you convinced? <laughs> So if you have a child in your life, you know what to do, right? You know what to do now. You know how important it is. They want, they, the study that they did said that we needed to be reading to our kids from zero to three, even when they can't understand a word. We should be reading to them every night so that they can hear the pattern of language. So if you've got a kid in your life, you know what to do. And if you don't, don't worry, because Nancy McDonald can set you up. <laughs> Nancy's here. Can you wave your hand, Nancy, because I'm not sure everybody knows who you are. Nancy McDonald works with our Partners in Education program, which is where we're sending our offering today and is also where we're, adopt, we're bringing school supplies in, which, by the way, I didn't mention in the announcements. We can keep bringing school supplies through next Sunday. So if you forgot, you can go when you're shopping this week. Nancy works with our Partners in Education program, which focuses on our adopted schools, Gilcrease Middle School, Hamilton Middle School, and Jackson Elementary. And if you live on this side of town and haven't heard of them, that's because they're not on this side of town. There are numerous programs of collaboration with our church and these schools. We've collected school supplies for them before, and we've done it again this week. There's a mentoring program, a tutoring program. You can read to the kids. We host a wish tree at Christmas time for the teachers. There are various opportunities for any amount of time or money that you have to give. And I'm not sure if you saw the paper this week, but I want to draw to your attention that this week, because mostly for the work of the teachers and the volunteers from, from our church and Nancy's hard work, <coughs> Hamilton Middle School and Jackson Elementary have been permanently removed off the at-risk list. And I want to help make sure that they stay off. And Gilcrease Middle School, our other adopted school, needs a lot of help right now. Now this summer, with the help of a few generous donors from our church, Partners in Education was able to send 16 children from Jackson and 21 from Hamilton to attend a YMCA camp for a week. Now these are children mostly from single parent families who have no place to go when school is out and no one to look after them. So this was an incredible opportunity for these kids, most of whom had never even been out of their neighborhoods. Some had never ridden on a bus, and hardly any of them had been to camp. What we teach in this church is a message that we can carry out into the world, and it will make a difference. This message is that all children are worth investing in. All children have potential and unique gifts that need to be honed and identified so that they can offer them to the world. And the research shows that they need to hear that message over and over again. Is it Mark? I think it's Mark 9, right? Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. It takes a lot of reminding to counter all these negative messages that these disadvantaged children are hearing. So every message, every word, every bit of attention that you can give them is valuable. For when one among us, and when I say us, I mean us, everyone, when one among us does not reach their potential, the community as a whole suffers. When I wrote that children's story that I told the children today, I was reminded that 
the message of the oak leaf can be seen in the imagery of this congregation. There are actually two oak leaves in the Simple Gifts 2 painting. And if you're new to our church, the Simple Gifts 2 painting is the painting that's in the foyer that was painted by local and renowned artist P.S. Gordon, or Pat Gordon, and was commissioned by our senior minister, Marlon Lavenhar, several years ago to depict the values and the history of our church. And in that painting, there are two oak leaves. One is falling on the left-hand side of the painting and reminds us of our own fleeting journeys. It reminds us that life is short and that we must be intentional with our time and our resources. The other leaf is a golden brown oak leaf atop a stack of books, and those books and this leaf represent our heritage. They include the Bible and Emerson, a journal reminding us not to leave out our own personal history, and that leaf, which serves to remind us of those who have come before us, those lives in this church and in this faith whose lives helped forge our path and who serve as what we call our mighty cloud of witnesses, holding us accountable to a wider vision that spans generations and reminds us to serve our values and not just ourselves. Now, when I wrote that children's story, another leaf that had my attention, oak leaf in this church, are the golden leaves on the memorial tree in the garden room. Some of people don't know that it's even there. Our memorial garden holds some of the ashes of many of our former members and their families. Some have chosen to have the names of their loved ones embossed on a leaf-shaped plaque that is on the memorial tree, which is hanging in the garden room wall right outside that door. So the oak leaf story has many layers of meaning. We are giving our children gold leaves today to remind them that they are part of this community and unique and deeply loved and supported. The words that were spoken in the back to school blessing were adopted from the very words that we say every time a child is dedicated in this congregation. That we agree to share in their upbringing, declare faith in their potential, and proclaim hope in their future. That is a valuable message for any child to hear. The gold oak leaf also reminds us of the cycle of life. So as this generation begins a new chapter in their lives, another chapter is closing for others in our congregation. So as we enter a new school year, and it will soon be a new church year, how will you spend the gold left in your life? That gold of time and attention. How will you demonstrate that value that we proclaim, that all are worthy? All of this reminds me of a poem that I had to memorize when I was in school. I, couldn't, I tried to do it without looking, but I'm, it's been too long ago, so I'm going to read it by Robert Frost. It's called, Nothing Gold Can Stay. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold, her early leaf's a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief. So dawn goes down today. Nothing gold can stay. So let go and ride the wind on your learning journey. Spend the gold of your attention and time with someone. And don't forget to invest in a few children along the way. Amen.